All right, so this is your lecture two for chapter four over fibers and textiles. And today we're going to be looking at the difference between natural and synthetic fibers. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to compare and contrast natural and manufactured or synthetic fibers, describe sources of natural fibers, including animals, plants, and minerals, list several examples of animal fibers used in textile production, Describe the variation in thickness and stiffness of different types of plant fibers. Provide examples of materials produced from the different parts of a plant. Contrast the chemical composition of animal fibers to plant fibers. Describe the chemical composition of asbestos. List examples of manufactured or synthetic fibers. Explain why rayon is considered to be a regenerated fiber and explain what polyester, nylon, acrylic, and olefin all have in common. So a few vocabulary terms that you'll need to make yourself familiar with for this lecture are amorphous, mineral fiber, natural fiber, synthetic fiber, monomer, and polymer. Okay, so fibers are classified as either natural or synthetic. Natural fibers come from animals, plants, and minerals that can be mined from the ground and are found in the form of polymers. So for animals and plants, these polymers are usually proteins, and the proteins are made up of monomers called amino acids. Synthetic fibers are manufactured and produced in large quantities as either regenerated fibers or polymers. Natural fibers are usually going to be amorphous, and this means that they don't really have a defined shape. They will be more spiral or um, have little imperfections. Uh, loosely arranged protein polymers that are soft, elastic, and absorbent. And loosely spun short fibers are going to shed much easier than tightly spun long fibers. So animal fibers come from three different sources. This can be fur, hair, or webbing, and these are all going to be made from proteins. Fur is used almost exclusively for coats and gloves. So mink fur or um, fox fur, things like that. Hair fibers are the most popular of animal fibers used in textiles, such as wool. And silk is collected from the cocoons of silkworms and is a type of webbing fiber. So here are silkworm cocoons. Plant fibers are specialized plant cells and are grouped by the part of the plant they come from. Seed fibers are fibers that originate from the seed of the plant, such as cotton. And here is an example of just a regular t-shirt and it's made from cotton. Fruit fibers come from the covering surrounding fruits like coir from coconuts. And this coir can be used to make doormats. Stem fibers such as flax, jute, and hemp are all produced from the thick region of plant stems. So here's an example of flax. And this makes different types of linens. Leaf fibers come from bundles of cells bound together within leaves and are used to make ropes, twines, and nettings. Um, an example of leaf fibers are manila. And here you can see that they've made twine. Mineral fibers are another category and come from natural sources like glass and are used in insulation materials such as fiberglass or asbestos. So here is an, an image of fiberglass, and it is used to make insulation. Synthetic or manufactured fibers are very regularly shaped fibers made with their purpose in mind. So instead of having an amorphous shape, they're usually going to be very smooth and straight. Some of these types of fibers are made with cellulose and some can be made with petroleum products and they usually melt at lower temperatures than natural fibers. 
Regenerated fibers are modified natural fibers where cellulose is chemically combined with acetate. Now, cellulose is actually a sugar found in plants and um, is usually involved in the different plant fibers as well. Rayon is a regenerated fiber that can imitate natural fibers such as silk and wool. And in this picture, you've got this artificial silk made from rayon. Capron or polyamide nylon is a lightweight yet strong fabric commonly used in fishing nets, ropes, and parachutes. Synthetic polymer fibers originate from petro petroleum products and are non-cellulose based, unlike regenerated fibers. Synthetic polymer, polymer fibers have no definite shape or size, but have very regular diameters. And they may be solid or hollow, depending on their purpose, depending on what they're going to be used for. Polyester is found in polar fleece, like in a Patagonia pullover. Um, it can also be found in wrinkle-resistant pants and is added to natural fibers to provide strength. Nylon was first introduced as an artificial silk and has similar properties to polyester, although not as strong. And this can be used in different types of netting and mesh. Acrylic is often found in artificial wool or imitation fur due to its light, fluffy feel. So a lot of the times the yarn that you buy at the store is going to be acrylic or artificial wool. Olefins are used in clothing such as thermal socks and as fiber fill insulation or even carpeting because it is quick drying and resistant to wear. Okay, so here we have a table that kind of compares these different types of fibers. It gives you a little bit of a description of each of them and describes each of their different characteristics. So the first four, cotton, linen, jute and hemp, and manila, are all going to be fibers made from plants. And again, fibers made from plants can be made from the different part of the plant. So cotton is made from the seed. Linen, jute, and hemp are all made from stems of different types of plants. And then manila is the fiber that comes from plant leaves, from the abaca plant. Wool and silk are going to be animal fibers. Wool, of course, comes from sheep. This is the fur of sheep. And then silk comes from silkworms and the cocoons that they make. Asbestos is a mineral type of fiber, which is a fiber form of glass. And this used to be a very common type of insulation, but they actually discovered that it can cause cancer because the tiny fibers of glass, when broken, can be inhaled and damage the lungs and eventually cause cancer. So they no longer use asbestos in insulation. And then manufactured fibers are going to be re regenerated polymers. And these vary. Some can be made with cellulose, some made with petroleum products, and these are usually found in clothing, bedding, towels, and carpets. Okay, so one thing I want to point out is if you look back at the wool composition, the polymer uh, or the composition is a polymer of keratin. So remember when we looked at hair, the protein that makes up the hair shaft is keratin. Well, that's exactly what this is, right? The polymer of keratin is what makes up this type of fiber or wool. The four plant types of fibers are all cellulose polymers. Um, they are highly crystalline and they resist rot and light damage because that's really what they are made for, right? They sit out in the light and um, can fight different types of bacterial infections. Okay, so here's an image of different types of fibers at um, using an electron microscope. So if you examine them, you can actually kind of tell which of these are going to be different hairs or come from animals 
and then which one is synthetic. There's only one that is synthetic here, and that's going to be the most smooth and um, perfectly shaped fiber on the far right. That is actually polyester. Now the first four, starting from the left, all have cuticles. So that should tell you that these are going to be different types of hair or fur from animals. Um, each of these has probably an embricate cuticle, maybe a cor coronal cuticle on that fourth fiber. Um, the first two actually come from sheep, so those are both different types of wool. The third one is alpaca fur, and then the fourth one is cashmere, and cashmere actually comes from a type of goat. So the next fiber over, um, this one right here, is actually silk. So it has a very, very smooth texture and just a slight twist to it. This fiber here is, I want to say, linen. So it comes from a plant, and it actually looks kind of like the stem of a plant. Um, it's got a little bit of roughness to it, but it is straight and, and strong. And then this fiber here is from cotton, and it is very spiraled. It's a little bit smooth, um, but it has a very spiraled texture, which is different from the rest. Okay, so that's it for our chapter four lecture two. Uh, next time we will talk about using fibers and forensic science.